Hey everybody, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I'm out at Heroes Park in Meridian today and uh, I have a new drone to show you. Uh, SJRC uh, is the outfit that made the F11 Pro. In my mind, of those bargain price drones, right around $200, it's the best one out there right now. Now I see the prices have gone up on it a little bit, but that's another story. But in the meantime, they came out with a drone, the SJRC uh, F7. Uh, so the people at TomTop sent me one for review. So heck, we're just gonna take a look at it here. Uh, so first thing, it's just, you can see here it comes in a really nice case, and it just amazes me. This drone, I looked on the website yesterday, retails for $229 and comes with this, uh, I mean, just a really nice high quality case. Of course, the case doesn't, uh, doesn't fly the drone, but it is good that they give you something to keep things organized. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we got. So uh, in the top compartment here, they give you a kind of a cardboard envelope uh, that's got the uh, the owner's manual in it and uh, SGRC if you're listening something a little bigger than this would be great uh, because uh, it could be difficult for old guys like me to read <laughs> but uh, anyway I guess that's a whole nother aside but as you look in the uh, in the bag here on the uh, on this flap that that uh, owner's manual sat in, the drone is under there. So let's pull it out and take a look at it. So the uh, SJRC F7, I'm calling this kind of a hybrid drone because as you can see, it's got folding arms, but it also has legs, kind of like a traditional Phantom style drone. So it's a little bit different and it's pretty good size too. Uh, let's see, weight wise here, let me take a look. This drone weighs 569 grams, so you absolutely are going to have to uh, register it and put a sticker on it. Uh, but let's take a look and see uh, how it unfolds. It's got a little uh, kind of restraining strap here on the top to hold the arms in. It's easy, you just pull that right off, and then the arms just fold out. So uh, unfold the, uh, the rear arms backwards, it says. It's got instructions on there. And, you know, I'm pulling them out. This is the first time I've pulled them out, and uh, they're definitely a little bit stiff. Oh, these, this, this, these front arms, I was trying to pull straight out. They, much like a DJI drone, they rotate. So they rotate forward, and uh, that's how they come out. does have one-piece props on it. It uh, includes an extra set of props. Uh, as well as the uh, screwdriver to take them on and off. Uh, but, uh, and it does have uh, brushless motors, which is always a good thing. These are 1806 brushless motors. The battery is a slide in in the back. Let's, uh, let's pull this guy out. And I'm looking at my notes here as I, as I do this, but uh, this is a 2600 milliamp uh, LiPo battery and it's got a uh, USB-C charge port on the back. And again, it's just simply a slide in, in the back of the drone, clips in, and you can feel it snap in there pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that seems to work pretty good. And oh, the, to, to uh, turn on the drone, it's just, you just hold down the button. It's not the short and long press that you're used to with DJI drones and others. You just hold it down, I think for three seconds. And then looking at the front of the drone, you can see this little window here and you know, you kind of hope that maybe it has obstacle avoidance or something, it does not. That's just there for looks. Uh, let's look at the bottom of the drone. At the bottom of the drone here, you'll see a couple of sonic sensors. This looks like it might be an optical flow, but it's not, there's really nothing there. Uh, and then the, the camera, I mean, this is a pretty good sized camera. This is like something you would see. And let me take the, uh, the gimbal restraint off here. Uh, and so it's a pretty darn good sized camera uh, and it it's on these silicone mounts like you would see you want the gimbal to be isolated from vibration and that does that. Uh, but it is, it's a three axis gimbal. So uh, 
let's hope for a nice stable video. If it's like it's big brother, the F11, it does a good job at that. So we'll see how this guy does. Now this camera, it's a 4K both uh, for photographs and for video. Now, the problem with video is it shoots at 15 frames per second. So what that means, you may not see that so much in forward flight, but when you're yawing, you will definitely see uh, a little bit of jerkiness with 15 frames per second. But if we can get good quality, nice, uh, stable, jello-free video, uh, in my mind, that'll be a win. And while I don't have an SD card in it yet, there's an SD card slot right there and by the way you can record to your mobile device uh, but it will only record video to your mobile device at uh, 1080 so I would suggest that you put an SD card in there I am absolutely going to do that before we fly and yes I do see that there is a, a cover on that a little plastic cover on the uh, lens I'll take that off before we fly as well so that's about it for the drone I mean it's pretty straightforward it's an interesting design I kind of like the idea of these legs. When I'm out in a park like this, you know, that way you can land in the grass without worrying about, uh, you know, mowing the grass or anything you can't like you do with uh, some of the smaller folding drones. So uh, now let's take a look at the controller. Okay, let's take a look at the remote here. Uh, so this is a pretty decent remote control. So it's got handles on the bottom that kind of pull down now. You'd look at these and you'd think, well, that's where you put your mobile device. They've got slots in them and so forth. No, you don't. Uh, they're just handles. Uh, but it does have a USB-C connector there at the bottom for uh, charging the uh, controller. So that's a good thing. Got, it's got an internal battery, uh, which makes it for a more powerful controller. Uh, this is where you keep your mobile device. And i got to pull this piece of plastic, but the mobile device fits up above. Uh, and then the antenna, let's, uh, let's pull those out and let me see if I can swivel those around. You're gonna want them pointed down like that. And the cool thing about these antenna is they are functional. They both have wires in them, so that's a good thing. So that means this is a pretty decent remote control. Uh, the other thing I will tell you though, is your phone uh, does not connect via an OTG cable to the controller it is Wi-Fi to the drone so that is going to have some limiting factors with regard to range however let's talk about uh, what we can see on this uh, controller and I'm going to move around here so I can see what I'm doing this button right here is the uh, speed mode so high and low speed next one over is a stop button emergency stop you would hold that down to uh, to stop the drone uh, if you know if it was flying away or something now understand that if you do that the drone is simply going to fall from the sky so you could destroy your drone so uh, you know you want to be careful about that you do have to hold it down for I think five seconds or something like that I can't remember quite a while to engage it so you're not just going to inadvertently touch it and your drone fall from the sky on off button right there uh, obviously that's self-explanatory uh, and then this is the uh, return to home button push that button the drone will come back and land uh, and it does have an LED display and yeah I'll, I'll peel this off before we take off that has all the usual telemetry range distance speed signal strength number of satellites etc uh, the normal stuff that you usually see then on the back here uh, the, the one would be on your right as you're uh, facing the drone that controls the angle of the camera points that camera up and down uh, this then is for starting uh, recording video. Uh, this button on this side is for just taking a picture. And this scroll wheel on this side, on the left hand side, is for zoom, although it's a digital zoom, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get too excited about that. As you crop in on these drones with cheaper cameras, that it's going to get pretty grainy, so it really isn't terribly useful. Uh, but pretty decent remote control, uh, so I'm encouraged by that. Now, that brings me to talking about range. Range-wise, they're saying uh, three kilometers on both FPV and on uh, 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 control range. Now, control, maybe, although I even, I doubt that. FPV, there's no way, because your drone is gonna get FPV via Wi-Fi 
directly from your mobile device. So uh, if you get 300 meters, you're gonna be pretty darn happy with that. Uh, and you know, control range, would it go a kilometer? I don't know, but what good does that do you if you can't see what you're looking at? So understand that this drone is gonna be a short range drone. You're not gonna be flying it out there uh, long range. And I don't know why they make those kind of claims, but, but they do, I, I guess just for advertising. So I'm looking uh, at my screenshot here. We've got about eight mile an hour winds today, 16 mile an hour gusts. This claims to have level five wind resistance, so that'll be plenty. I mean, it, the drone should be able to handle it fine. We'll find out. Uh, and it's about 60 degrees outside today, so. Hey, okay, that's about it. Let me get all the stickers peeled off of the remote control and the drone, and uh, yeah, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okay, so I've got an SD card uh, loaded onto the drone, and uh, I've got all the stickers peeled off of everything. So uh, the first step, according to the instructions, are to fire up the drone, excuse me, the controller first, and then the drone. So let's turn on the controller. So that just gave me battery percentage. Maybe I was holding it down too long. Let's do a short press. Now that gives me battery. So let's do a short and a long press. There we go. And then it says connecting. So now the next step is to power on the drone. And I can hear the tone on the drone and it says connecting on the, uh, on the uh, LED screen here. Okay, I was about ready to give up and do some troubleshooting, but it, uh, it finally connected. I'm gonna say, that it just took longer than I thought, less than a minute, uh, and it is in GPS mode, so evidently it's got satellites already. So the next thing we do is fire up the app, and that is, uh, I'm trying to remember here, the SJRC Pro app, I believe. So the app that we're looking for is the SJRC SJF Pro app. So we got that fired up, and we'll have to make sure that that's connected. I, I've connected to this app before. Oh, oh it's, uh, and you have, evidently it doesn't change orientation, so I'm gonna have to switch my phone around here. And uh, so then I'm looking for, uh, I'm gonna select the F7 here. So there's the F7 selected. And uh, yeah, let's see if we are connected. Uh, to the drone, and if not, we're going to do that. So let me go to my uh, settings and Wi Fi not connected. So we're not connected, and there's the drone right there. I'm going to click on the drone, and uh, it shouldn't require any password. Let's see if it connects here, and it is, so it's connected. So we're good to go there. Let's, uh, let's go back to that app. So there's the app, and uh, yeah, it's got the guide, learn to fly, controls. I assume we're gonna click on controls, and I just wanna make sure that we're connected. So the first thing we're gonna do now is the, uh, the compass calibration, which is the two joysticks uh, up and in. And basically it just says one spin around, and then hold it down, and one spin around again. And it did beep, and uh, the light is on solid. Got a little dizzy there. Hey, and I even see FPV on our screen. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is the, uh, the gyro calibration, and so that's both sticks up and out. And I heard a beep there, and it should give us another beep. Well, I didn't hear any beep. Let me check and see what the light says. We've got a solid green light, so I'm gonna say that is successful. Uh, and now, uh, as you can see, we have FPV on the app, and I'm gonna check the, uh, yeah, the gimbal. I've got control of the gimbal here, as you can see, moving it up and down. Let's go into the, uh, we're gonna turn beginner mode off and uh, use cellular data. So for some, some reason here, it's not letting me adjust these. Oh, there it is, now it is letting me adjust the sliders. So I'm gonna move that up to max. Uh, the flight altitude, 
I don't know what that is on this guy, but looks like 120, so we're good there. We're gonna, that's maximum legal. Return to home altitude is set at 20 meters. We're gonna go a little higher. Let's go to 30 meters with that. Uh, and those sliders work pretty good, so let's hit save again. Save successfully. Let's click on track now. Uh, max mileage, flight records. That looks like it's just flight records. Image, photo quality, 4K, 16 by 9. So as you can see there, 4K, 15 frames per second. It's, there is a selection there for 2.7K at 25 frames per second. Now that was not in the manual and it didn't light up. So I'm going to click back on that 4K again. So when I clicked on that 2.7K, it did not light up. So I'm going to assume that that's not there. Now PTZ adjust. Okay, so that's for tuning your, uh, your roll and pitch and yaw. So we're going to leave that on factory settings. So it looks like we're good to go. The only thing I'm looking at is it looks like our, it's telling us that our, I'm looking at our battery meter and it doesn't look like it's saying the battery is full. However, I, I know that it is from, uh, you know, I completely charged it. So let's, I'm going to, on the app here, although maybe we can just do it on the controller. Let's start recording. I'm going to hit the record button here. Oh, and you know what? Now we're connecting again for some reason. What we lost connection and it's, I wonder if the drone shut down from sitting there so long. And it did. Let's fire up the drone again. Yeah, so what happened there is the drone just shut down as I was messing around there, so let's let it connect again. Boy, I'll tell you what, this thing takes a while to connect. There, okay, we've got it. So let's look at that menu again, make sure nothing changed and it didn't. So we're good to go there. I'm going to hit that record button and see if we can start recording. And if we did, it doesn't say on the app, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to switch on the app and I'm going to start recording on the app and it is indeed giving me the countdown number on there. So, you know, I don't know what I did with that record button, but it wasn't giving me the countdown so I didn't feel like I was recording. So let's go ahead and hit uh, take off on the app. So I'm going to hit uh, in the top left there, you see that up arrow? And then it's got a slider and nothing. I wonder if you have to arm the motors first. Let me do that. So I'm going to go both sticks down and in. That arms the motors. Let's hit take off again and hit the slider. Yeah, I don't know why I can't do an auto takeoff. Uh, but let's just try it on the controller here. So I hit a, up on the left stick and I got it to take off there. So geez, it's hovering nice and steady here. Uh, and we're recording video, let's turn it around. And there again, you can see that 15 frames per second. I can even see it on, uh, on, on looking at FPV. And I'm looking at my FPV screen. It looks a little squished, but that doesn't mean anything. We'll see what comes off of the uh, card. Let's bring it in. I'll tell you what I like is the fact that this guy is, uh, it's really stable. I mean, this is awesome. This is perfect. Now, one of the things I'm not seeing on my app here is I'm not seeing any of the, uh, uh, the, the telemetry on the app. So it makes me think I need, maybe I need to reconnect the app. So uh, let's mess around here a little bit. I don't know, that's kind of odd, isn't it? I don't know. Well, let's, let's uh, rock it back and forth and we can see that gimbal is working pretty good. And watch when I go backwards with it. Let me, uh, let me get it back over a little bit. We're gonna go backwards and you'll see that camera tip down and as I go forward you'll see it pitch up so uh, yeah all right so I'm not gonna worry about that telemetry on the screen let's get it out and we're gonna try a return to home and let's see how that uh, how that works out once we do that so uh, 
Uh, reverse and up now, reverse and up. And I'll tell you what, this guy's pretty quick. I don't know. Uh, and that's me trying to yaw it a little bit. Okay, so we are out there, according to the controller, about 80 meters. So I'm going to hit return to home. I'm going to try it on the app I, and see if it'll go into return to home. See, and it's not taking any control, any uh, commands from the app. So let's bring it back in and land it. I'm going to hit return to home on the controller. And that, actually, it's just landing in place. Wow, that was weird. So I hit it again. So the first click, it looked like it was just landing in place. And I hit it again, and I thought it was in return to home. That's me dropping the gimbal. Yeah, it's coming home. It just took it a second. So let's, uh, let me drop the gimbal down here, and you guys can see where we're at. Let's see how close it can get. And I'm going to, I'm going to uh, get out of the app and restart the app. Now, I'm going to give the drone a pass on this because I think it may have been affected by the fact that the drone uh, shut down on us. Now, one of the things here, this drone does not have uh, precision landing, so, but we're not worried about it because it's got those legs on the bottom, and even if it doesn't, uh, you know, even if it doesn't hit the pad, it's not going to hurt it. It's not going to mow any grass. Let's uh, see if we can pick that camera back up. And it's looking down. It's going to be fairly close here. You should, yeah, you're seeing it on the GoPro now. And as soon as we land here, I am going to uh, stop and restart the app. And it's taking it a while to shut down. Okay, I'm stopping the app or the uh, recording, and that stopped. Okay, I put it back on the landing pad. I am going to get out of the app completely and restart it. Okay, I uh, cycled everything, and we got it all fired back up. So uh, let's see where we're at. It's still connecting, and I am not. Uh, I am not getting any kind of FPV. It says we're in GPS mode. Let me uh, let me see if I can start recording. Image disconnected. It says, I, guys, I do not know what the heck is going on here. Let me shut down this app again. These are the kind of things that I worry. If you are a beginner, you've never flown a drone, that is going to be so frustrating. So. F11, let's switch back to the F7, and let's hit controls, and it takes us to this page. There, there we go, there it came back. Uh, I don't know what we did different, but it's telling us we're ready to fly. Let's tap on that ready to fly and see what it says. Yeah, nothing, so we're ready to fly. Uh, and so let's go ahead, let me see if I can record with the button on the controller. And it did, it started this time. Okay, so this looks a little bit better. Let's go ahead and let's try and do it. And we're also getting, we must not have had telemetry at all before because even the battery is up now. So whatever happened before, well, I don't know what, but we've got it now. So let's hit take off on the app. And again, in that top left, and I'm gonna slide the slider over, maybe. Well, it tried. You know, it, it didn't. It looked like I didn't get that slider all the way over. We're going to do it again. Yeah, I don't know, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and do a manual takeoff. Manually arm the orders, uh, the motors by the sticks down and in, and I'm going to go up on the on the uh, left stick. And there's the drone. We got a little bit of wind now, so we're recording. Let's quit messing around. We did a return to home once already, and you guys got a close up look at the drone, so. Let's go ahead and fly out here a ways. And let's just see what we can get for video quality. I can tell you it looks pretty decent on the uh, on what I see on FPV. Although, you know, we talked about the frame rate. 
I had a, a little kind of weirdness on the yaw there. We've got telemetry on the controller now, as you guys can see. Let's take it up a ways. Let's go up, and boy, I'll tell you what, this thing's fast. We're going to, uh, let's go out here to the corner, and I'm going to scroll around and take a look at, uh, and, that, and that's weird. See, so, so you guys saw me yaw to the left, and then it came right back. It's weird. So yaw to the left, let go of the stick. Well, now, now it stayed there. So you guys have seen this view before. I gotta tell you, the picture looks really good on, uh, on FPV. We're down to 60% battery here, so, and I've only got one battery, so. And I am trying to yaw to the right. Fair amount of lag in these controls, I'm telling you. I don't know, yeah, exactly what that is. So I'm gonna let off the stick now. Well, there it stopped. Okay, let's go full stick forward here, and let's see how fast this baby will get up to. Because it's, uh, man, it is, it's moving pretty good. And, it, and it's moving, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to yaw it. It definitely was moving to the left. I, and you see it snap back there? That's odd. I don't know what that's about. Uh, it, but it tends to snap back. So about six meters per second there. And, you know, from what I'm seeing, the horizon looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's turn around again. I'm gonna go to the left, let go of the stick. Yeah, no, it stayed. It's weird, it snapped back uh, the other times. So uh, let's get turned around here and I'm gonna check our speed mode. I don't even know if we're in high speed mode or low speed mode. And you can see the cloud shadows there. So I am, let's see, speed it says at the top but it doesn't say if it's high or low speed. I'm gonna hit that button. and it just says speed, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little bit, uh, guys, I'm, I'm not sure. So two, we got two beeps, so maybe it's just the beeps. It doesn't, I was hoping it would say on the telemetry on the app, if, or excuse me, on the controller, but it didn't. I didn't notice anything on the app either, but let's go full stick forward. We got two beeps, and there's about five and a half meters per second. And the drone, you know, it's that's, that's pretty quick. That's about, I don't know, 15 miles an hour or so. So that's in the same speed. So let's hit that button one more time. Now that gave me three beeps that time, so let's turn around. Sorry for this quick yaw, and let's go the other way. Let's see what kind of speed we get. Full stick forward now on that right stick. Yeah, that's a lot faster, there we go. Look, we're at about nine, we were at nine meters per second there for a little bit, so drone's moving right along. I tell you, the controls are just a little bit laggy, but uh, I can tell you the video looks pretty good. We're down to 44% battery. So I am going to, uh, I'm gonna drop the uh, gimbal. Whoops, I meant to be just a little bit there. So there we go. So I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna take a picture here. And it says picture receiving. So we'll get to look at a picture. As you can see, the smoke is blown out of the air here in Boise. We're back to having nice clear skies. Start recording again here right now. And uh, yeah, let's turn it around here. Let's bring it back and let's see if we can try uh, maybe some orbits and so forth. So let me bring it back to us. And we'll drop some altitude as we come. I'll tell you the. The controls on this thing are, it, it, you know, it's okay, but if you're used to more precision controls on some other drones, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of how to say this. It's not horrible, but, it, but it's not the most precise either. Okay, so I wanted to get out here far enough uh, that the drone would be away from any structures and trees or anything. 
So I'm going to click on that what looks like a little joystick kind of in the middle left hand side and we can see uh, uh, interest point. So we're going to click on that and we're going to click the radius up. Let's say 16 meters and we're going to slide this slider. Yeah, it took that. So the drone flew back. I walked under it and the drone is flying back from me. Now, yeah, now it's turning around. And I don't know what it's doing. It's not really doing an orbit, I can tell you that. It's moving through space, but it's not an orbit. I'm, that's me dropping the camera. Yeah, I have no idea what it's doing here. We're gonna let's just let it. Let's just see what it's uh, what it's up to. It is. It's basically moving in a straight line. Uh, yeah, guys, I, I I don't know what to tell you. Okay, let me uh, turn that off. So I shut it down. We're back. I'm backing it back up. Oh, this is fun. Bringing it back over the top of me. Okay, we're gonna try that one more time here. So click on that little joystick, interest point, and radius. Uh, let's just let's make it a smaller radius. Let's say eight meters, and let's slide it and see what it does. So now again, the drone is moving away and then it should turn around and it is. And it's just moving in a straight line again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got no idea what's going on here. I, I can tell you what that's not is it's not a point of interest. <laughs> So uh, interesting, but uh, but that's what it uh, that's what it's doing. I wonder if it'll stop. We set it at eight meters. That's more. That's way more than eight meters. So we better we better tell it to stop here. So I'm going back in there. Stop. Let's bring it down and let's see. We've got 23% battery. Wow, we're uh, we're about out of battery here. So let me bring it in to me and uh, let's try see if we can get a. Uh, uh, follow me. Okay. Drop that camera down a little. And uh, let's go into that little joystick looking thing again. And we're going to go to image follow. And uh, two, three. Well, let's see. It seems like it's got me. Well, I w yeah, lost. So I was moving it forward. Let's try that again. Image follow. One more time. Image follow. And let me move sideways this time. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, the drone is not moving, but it is following me. Oh no, then it says lost. So I don't know. Let's try that again. Let's go in and let's, this time let's do, uh, let's do, uh, GPS follow. And it, okay. That made me a little nervous. So sometimes, that can mess these guys up when you do that. Let me see. Yeah, it's it's coming. So as you can see, the problem with GPS follow is it's it struggles to keep you in frame. Yeah, so I think we went into return to home, yeah. It went into return to home, so I'm gonna go. Yeah, so it took itself out of GPS follow. We're 
Let's walk back to the uh, camera. See, that was it. 15%, 16% battery. So that's good. The drone did what it's supposed to do, and it's up at its uh, 30 meter return to home height. Let me drop that camera down. So we got the camera looking straight down. Let's see how close this guy will get to the, uh, uh, to the uh, landing pad. It's coming down ever so slowly. Yeah, so the drone is not descending. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, it, and it, it took itself out of return to home. So uh, I'm gonna hit that button again. Yeah, so now it's coming down. Yeah, I don't know what happened uh, if, yeah, maybe, you know, when I was messing around, maybe I touched it and took it out of return to home. But uh, anyway, it's coming down now. Let's pick that camera back up. And you can see, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty darn close to the uh, pad here. You can see that on the, uh, on the GoPro. And like I said, I like those legs. It uh, keeps it from, uh, you know, keeps the, the blades out of the grass. Takes it a while to shut down, but it does. Okay, let's, uh, let's remember to stop recording. I hope I did that earlier. So let's do that right now. And it did, it stopped recording. And we're at 15% battery. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, uh, the uh, SJRC F7, kind of a hybrid uh, folding drone. It does fold, but it's got legs on it as well. Uh, you know, uh, mixed results, I would say. It, it, it flew okay, not great, but okay. It wasn't terrible. Uh, it's got good power. I mean, it, uh, I think we had it up nine meters per second, which is roughly 21, 22 miles an hour when we, when we got it into high speed mode, uh, when we finally got three beeps there when we pushed the button. Interestingly enough, there's nothing on the that I saw on the app or on the controller that told you what speed mode you were in. So you just had to listen to those beeps. Uh, flight time, you know, I didn't measure it exactly, but we got probably maybe 15 minutes, I would say roughly somewhere around there, uh, which is okay for a drone like this. I wish I had another battery for it. We'd, we'd check out waypoints and some other things. Uh, as it was where it kind of fell down were those intelligent flight modes. Uh, we tried the orbit and that just plain didn't work. The drone, it, it, it did what I've seen other drones do. It, you, when you set the radius, it flew to the radius, turned around, but instead of starting an orbit, it just flew forward. So don't know what that was about. We tried the image follow me. It just didn't work very well. It kept losing me. Uh, you know, I would draw the little box around and I tried to move towards the drone and push the drone backwards. It wouldn't do that. And it, was pretty clear it was going to lose me. Uh, we tried it again, moving sideways, had a little better success. The drone didn't seem to move, it just seemed to kind of rotate in place uh, as it followed me. And then finally, even then, it lost me. So, uh, you know, I, it's not terribly useful. Uh, and then we tried the GPS follow me. Uh, I've had issues with GPS follow me before with some of these lower priced drones, so I was a little nervous. But we hit that button and the drone started moving away, uh, but then it stopped. I've had drones try and just go nuts when you did that, but this one didn't. It stopped finally, and it did seem to follow me. But the problem with that GPS follow me is that it doesn't keep you in center of frame on the camera. Well, what's the point of follow me on a drone? You're, you're trying to take video or pictures of yourself. If it's not keeping you in frame, it doesn't really do you much good. So I'm gonna say those are of limited value. Uh, but that said, it, it flew just fine, uh, and it was very stable. That's the other thing I will say about it, is man, it was a very, very stable GPS, worked good, and evidently these downward facing uh, uh, sensors uh, definitely kept it uh, right at the same height off the ground, so that was good. Uh, as far as video quality, you guys are gonna know that already. I'll find out when I get home and look at what's off the SD card. I can tell you what I saw on FPV looked good. Uh, the, 
The colors look good. I, I liked the color science. It looked really good and it was nice and clear. I didn't see any jello. I didn't see any shakes. So like I said, you guys will have seen that already. And that is, let me stress this, that is the most important thing is that what you get off of that video card because that's the reason you buy a GPS camera drone is to get good uh, aerial video. Uh, the other really good thing about this guy is, you know what, I was talking about control before. This is a very challenging Wi-Fi environment here in this park. There's a lot of Wi-Fi interference. We didn't have a single problem. This guy was solid as a rock as we went from one end of the park to the other. I had solid FPV. I had solid signal strength the whole time. Now, I didn't try and fly it across the road uh, to see how far out that would go before we lost FPV. We might try that sometime. And I would like to try out the waypoints. We simply ran out of battery. And, and TomTop just sent me the single battery version. I wish they would have, uh, I would have had two batteries and then we could have done that today. But, uh, but we'll, uh, hopefully we can try that another time. Like I said, I saw this on TomTop for about 230 bucks. I will put a link down below in the uh, description. Uh, the, I think if you look around, I think you can get the F11 for about the same price. That F11 Pro, if you look around a little bit, uh, I think you can get it for about two, around 250 bucks. I think I saw it on TomTop for like 280, something like that. Uh, so maybe it was 270. In any case, uh, I'll, I'll put a link for the F11 on there as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, decent little drone. Uh, you know, if you're really looking for uh, video quality and range and so forth, you know, maybe you would want the uh, DJI Mini SE, the Mini SE at 299 bucks. Man, that just, I, you know, I just think it makes it tough for guy, drones like this to compete. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is uh, still a, a solid product. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And most of all, of course I appreciate you watching this video. And yeah, we will see you on the next one. The SJRC F7, uh, pretty good drone. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.